I'm talking about doing business with individuals, human beings, just like you, just like me, that are loaning us money on our deals, either from their investment capital or from their retirement accounts. So simply put, it is a one-on-one -on -one transaction. This private money is a one-on-one -on -one transaction between you and your private lender, or it may be more than one private lender. You can have more than one private lender uh, on a particular deal. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Who's got a win that they want to share? And I'll start out. Well, Crystal, have I got a win to share? And this is just another case of an example of why you should not list your property when you have it for sale at what your realtors says you should list it for, particularly when we're in a market like we still are in now, right? Inventory, supply, demand, all that kind of stuff. So. I've got this house in Havelock, North Carolina, that uh, we recently finished the rehab. Here's the numbers that I'm, I'm getting ready to share a really, really important lesson. And Crystal, if you've got a win to share or somebody else has got a win to share, we'll open that up for probably one more win and then we'll start, uh, we'll start on in. But I got this house in Havelock, North Carolina, recently finished the rehab. Here's the numbers. I bought it for $75,000, $75,000. Now the rehab, you might as well say, ended up being around 50,000. So when all was said and done, I had $125,000 in it. So I just put it on the market a couple of weeks ago. Now here's a little secret about putting houses in the multiple listing service. What I do in both of my counties that I invest in, what I do is on Mondays, I have my realtor put it in the multiple listing services, what's called coming soon. Coming soon means nobody can look at the house, nobody can go in it, but I've already got my music video of the house, the video, I've got the, um, I've got the pictures, it's staged to the hill, everything's beautiful. Well, it's coming soon. They can see the price of the house, they can see the video, the music video, they can see the pictures, but you can't go in until it goes active in multiple listing service. So we go active on Friday morning at eight o'clock after coming soon on Monday. What I want to do is build up demand, right? I want to build up demand and curiosity. So then when we go active, I got all those people that are like, waiting for the previous showing to finish that are parked in the driveway or parked out on the shoulder waiting to go in. So, you know, people are seeing all this interest going on on Friday. Anyway, here's the point of this story. So my realtor told me that I should list it between 212 and $218,000. Now that'd be pretty good right there, right? Got 125 in it, bought it for 75, rehab of 50, got 125 in it. Listing it for 100, 212, 218, that sounds pretty good. And I said, list it for $239,900. She says, there's no way that it will appraise for anything close to that. I said, I'm not looking, first of all, for the finance buyer. I'm looking for the all cash buyer that doesn't need an appraisal. Right. She says, OK, so she listed for two thirty nine nine on Monday. Coming soon. We go active Friday morning. We have multiple showings on the weekend and come Monday this past Monday a week ago. Guess what? We went under contract for two thirty four nine. So I came off of it. Five thousand dollars. Went under contract for two thirty four nine. But when I went under contract for two thirty four nine, 
It was a VA pre-approval, and I'm going, oh, no, VA, 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 because sometimes VA can be like a little sticky, maybe a little more conservative. But I said, you know what? We're, we're going with it. We're going with it. So I'm under contract for 234.9. God is good. Yesterday morning, I get a text from my realtor. She says, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It appraised for two thirty four nine list price. I told Carol Joy here in the hotel room. I said, "Look, just by listing it for a higher amount, we just picked up about twenty more thousand dollars or so. You know, just by doing that." So, hey, look, if you don't get anything else out of PMA Zoom right there, you just got a golden nugget about when it comes to listing your properties. I want to talk about mindset. I want, to, I want to talk about in this world of private money that I live in, Crystal, Chaffee, all, all of my team members, my, my mastermind members, everybody. The mindset is this. How in the world do you raise or can you raise like me millions of dollars in private money? I would never ask anybody for money. And I get the question all the time, I say, Jay, how in the world do you have eight and a half million dollars of private money at your disposal and you never ask anybody for money? And you platinum and mastermind members, you've heard me say it a hundred times. We simply put on our teacher hat and we start teaching people in our warm market, people that we have some kind of relationship with, they're in our cell phone, they're on our email list, social media. We start teaching people what private money is. We start teaching them our private lending program and how they can earn high rates of returns safely and securely. And you see, Carol Joy, my wife and I, a lot of y'all have not met Carol Joy yet. You will. But of our 47 private lenders that we have funding our deals, not one of them, I'm talking about the 47 private lenders in our warm market, all these people we had some kind of relationship with. We went to church, we went to church with them, still do, or they are family, friends, business associates, Rotary Club members. Uh, in Business Networking International, we have some kind of association with them. Not one of them, not one of them heard of private money or private lending before I introduced this world to them. One of them had ever heard of self-directed IRAs, and I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. None of them heard about self-directed IRAs, so I put on my teacher hat and I taught them private money is. I told them what my program is and how they can make a lot of money. A whole lot more than, than you know, going, going to the local bank. And so here, here's the first mindset shift when it comes to attracting private money. You know, the traditional way to get private money, excuse me, to get funding for your real estate deals, the traditional way is what do you do? You go to the bank, you go to the mortgage lender, you get on your hands and knees, you put your hands underneath your chin, and you know you get down in front of Mrs. Banker or Mr. Banker, and you say, please fund my deal. Please fund my deal. I need you to fund my deal. There's none of that in this world. None of that. You see, because I'm not asking someone to fund my deal. I am teaching them what private money is and what private lending is. And instead of asking for a mortgage, I'm offering a mortgage, right? Now, what is another way? And here's a writer downer right here. What is another way that I don't ask? Okay, so don't miss this. Don't miss this. I teach. Private, now, now, there's other categories, other places to find private lenders. We'll talk about that. Time, time, if we have enough time here on this Zoom. But I teach them, and then when they tell me how much they've got to work with, is it investment capital, liquid capital, is it retirement funds, whatever it is, 
They tell me how much they've got to work with. If they've got money in a retirement fund, and don't be mistaken, you're not only borrowing private money from individuals that have money in retirement funds. It can be just liquid capital. It can be retirement funds, et cetera. Well, if they've got retirement funds, they want to get a more safe, non-volatile right, investment. I'll introduce them to my Quest representative, and they'll get their money moved over. Now, don't miss this point. This is really, really important. They tell me how much they got to work with. They love my program, right? They love the program, love the interest rate that I'm paying. And so I then say, I will put your money to work for you just as soon as possible. And so I said, I'm going to find you a deal to loan money on and invest in with me. And I'll get back with you ASAP. Now, here's the important thing not to miss. And that is, don't make the mistake of teaching someone in your warm market what private money is and what your private lending program is. And in the same conversation, tell them you've got a deal that you need funded, right? You're already desperate without even trying to be desperate because you're, you're telling them about private money and you're bringing up a deal. Ask me how I know not to make this mistake. Right. So what we do is we separate, we separate the activity of teaching the private money program and then getting a deal funded. So here I'm going to give you the exact scripting right now. The exact scripting as to what we say when I have a deal that's ready to be funded. So I got a private lender. They've told me how much money they have. They love the program. They know they're waiting for the phone call. They're waiting for the phone call, right? And so I call them up. So let's say Chaffee is one of my private lenders. So I call up Chaffee. Chaffee answers the phone. We have, you know, a little bit of chit chat and I get right to it. Here's the script. I say, Chaffee, I have got great news. I can now put your money to work for you. I've got a house in Newport with an after repaired value of $200,000. The funding required for the deal is $150,000. You see, I already know Chav has got $150,000. He already told me. He's waiting for the phone call. And it's investment capital. I know it's investment capital. He's already told me. It's not retirement funds. So I got a house in Newport with an after repaired value of $200,000. The funding required is $150,000. Closing is next Thursday. So you'll need to have your funds wired to my real estate attorney, my closing agent, my next Wednesday. I'm going to have my real estate attorney email you the wiring instructions. End of script. I want you to notice a couple of things. Number one, Chaffee's been waiting for the phone call, right? This phone call is no surprise to Chaffee. I told him I'd call him and put his money to work just as soon as possible. So I called him up, chit chat, great news. The first thing I told him, so I'm only telling him four things. And after the first deal he funds, he don't even want to know these four things. So I tell him, I got the after, notice I'm not telling him the purchase price, he could care less. I'm telling him the after repaired value, $200,000. That's the first thing I'm telling him about the property. I'm not giving him the physical address, he could care less. The after repaired value, the second thing I'm telling him is that the funding required is 150. So I'm telling him how much I'm going to borrow. I already know he's got that amount of money because he told me two weeks ago, right? The third thing I'm telling him is the closing date is next Thursday. And so he needs to have his money wired to my real estate attorney's account by next Wednesday. That's it. That's it. The only time I've had a private lender bail out on me is when I didn't put their money to work fast enough. Because you know, private money is like bananas in the grocery store. It will go rotten on you and disappear if you don't consume it, right? So you want to put that private money to work. So do you understand what I'm saying about the mindset of this thing? right? I'm not chasing. I'm not begging. I mean, you notice I didn't call up Chaffee, my private lender, 
and say, Chaffee, I got this deal. Let me tell you about it. I tell him about it. And then I say, Chaffee, do you want to fund the deal? That's the most stupid question in the world. I got asked my private lenders if he wants to fund the deal. Of course he wants to fund the deal. And I can tell you how he really wants to fund the deal or why he really wants to fund the deal is if he taught him the private lending program, if his funds are retirement funds that maybe he had in the stock market or a previous 401k, and I have introduced him to my Quest representative and he's moved, had his funds moved over to Quest on my lands. Is my private lender waiting for the phone call? He ain't making no money. He's not making any money on those funds that he moved over to Quest until I call him up with the good news and I can now put his money to work. So again, you see, there's no applications on this. It's all about teaching people in your war market. You know, I, I remember like it was yesterday how I learned and came about to learn about private money. And a lot of y'all haven't heard this. I mean, Carol Joy, my wife and I, we invested from 2003 to 2009, the first years, first six years, using conventional funds at the local bank, getting on my hands and knees and begging, right, from 2003 to 2009. And then in January 2009, I called him a banker. I had two deals under contract. The profits were going to be over $100,000. I learned I'd lost my line of credit. Oh, boy, what am I going to do? My definition of coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. So I was introduced to this world of private money. In less than two weeks, I learned all about it. I studied it. I put my program together. And then I started teaching people in our local area. I raised $2,150,000 in the first 90 days because I got my mindset right, put on my teacher hat, started teaching the program, and so we went from there. Now, let's be clear about this next point. When we're talking private money in this world, I am not talking hard money. I'm not talking about hard money, all you new PMA members, okay? I'm talking about doing business with individuals, human beings, just like you, just like me, that are loaning us money on our deals, either from their investment capital or from their retirement accounts. So simply put, it is a one-on-one -on -one transaction. This private money is a one-on-one -on -one transaction between you and your private lender or it may be more than one private lender. You can have more than one private lender uh, on a particular deal. So I'm not talking joint venturing, all right? You know, the old business model, somebody puts up the money, private lender puts up the money, and then you're sharing the profits at the end of the deal. And there can be a case for that because there's no monthly payments whenever you joint venture. However, I don't want to give up all that percentage of my profit. I want to pay a straight interest rate. That's part of the program that we teach. So we're not talking about joint venture partners. In fact, write this down. The private lender does not own the property. Private lender does not own the property, does not have any ownership in the property. The private lender in the same capacity as a bank. So it's your entity. It's your LLC or your land trust or whatever entity that you're buying in. It is your entity that owns the property. And then your private lender is in the same capacity as a bank. They're going to get the same protection as the bank would. I'm also not talking about uh, in addition to that hard money, I'm not talking about banks. I'm not talking about financial institutions. When you borrow money from those places, who's making the rules? They are. They're making the rules. But you see, in this program, we are making the rules. You're making the rules. You're setting the interest rate. You're setting the length of the note. I mean, I even, I even, you know, structure some deals to where I don't even make any payments. I mean. Hello, right? 
So you can structure deals to where you're not even making any payments, particularly if you're going to be doing a quick flip that you're going to be in and out of it maybe in six months or nine months. So this private money in this world, this money works for single family and it works for commercial as well. I mean, who wants to also do maybe some small apartments, duplexes, triplexes, or quadplexes, right? So it's the same money. We just structure the deals differently. Also, I want you to understand this world of private money, we are not talking about raising money for a fund. You see, that's called syndication. So you can raise money and you can put a fund together and you can have private lenders invest into your fund, but you're going to do that for larger commercial projects. So I want you to write this down. In this world of single family houses, using private lenders, everything we do is called a one-off, a one-off. But what in the world does a one-off mean? A one-off means is that you got a private lender or maybe more than one private lender that is secured. Those notes are secured by the property that we're buying. Okay? Your private lenders are being secured. They're getting either a mortgage or a deed of trust. We're, we are not. Here's another writer downer. We are not borrowing unsecured funds. You can legally. You can borrow unsecured funds, give somebody a promissory note, and you're done. But we don't do that in this world. I want to protect my private lenders by securing the promissory note with the mortgage. In North Carolina, it's called a deed of trust. So, in other words, another way of saying a one off is every deal stands on its own. Now, there's three, write these down. There are three. Primary areas or categories of where you're going to get private money. There is what we call your existing warm market. Those are people you've already got a relationship with. Okay. And then there is what I call your expanded warm market. In fact, at the Private Money Academy live event, Crystal, myself, uh, I see we got Banjo and Erica on here, other Platinum and Mastermind members, we have joined us. And we do a deep dive into networking. How do we expand your warm market? Some people tell me that all my people are broke, right? Well, first of all, I don't believe you, right? Um, but I say expand your market. Well, how do you expand your warm market and get more connections? Well, stay tuned for the next Private Money Academy Zoom and get to the live event. So expand your connections. Third category of private lenders, these individuals are existing private lenders. Well, where do you find existing private lenders, individuals that are already loaning money out on real estate? Well, you can do it the hard way, like I started in 2009. I, I didn't do it by 90 days. I hired my real estate attorneys, paralegal, to search public records in our local county where I invest. And I had the paralegal search for deeds of trust that uh, in promissory notes that were secured by deeds of trust with individual names on those deeds of trust, meaning not LLCs or institutions or banks, but individuals that were loaning money out on real estate. Well, in 90 days, we found two. I said, good night. This has got to be a quicker way uh, you know, to get that. So now we have software and we're able to automate that and we get that all updated every month. But I can tell you another free place to get existing private lenders as well. Quest, on the, I think it's the fourth Wednesday of each month. Today is the fourth Wednesday. And I think it's at 6 p.m. Cheryl, you would know. I think you're going to the, is it at 7 p.m. Eastern time? Is that Eastern time? Yeah. So 7 p.m. Eastern time, every fourth Wednesday of the month. And it's free to attend on Zoom. And you can go network. You can, hey, look, you may find an interesting statistic right here that you might not have heard. Did you know over 70% of account holders at self-directed IRA companies are wanting to loan their retirement funds out to you, to real estate investors? They want to be passive investors just sitting back collecting 
you know, interest safely and securely. There's one little caveat or one little thing you need to know about that. Well, guess what? It's no surprise. An existing private lender means they've already done private money, right? They've already loaned money out. So now you're not putting your teacher hat on to those existing private lenders and teaching them your private lending program. Now it's a networking event. It's a networking activity. You get to know each other. You find out what they are accustomed to getting. And it, when, they're, when they're happy with 6 or 7%, I don't try to talk them into 8 right? So Cheryl, it'll be interesting to see how it goes for you on the quest, right? So don't teach them your program. Don't you be offering 8%. You be asking them, what are they accustomed to getting, right? And when they say 12% and two points, you know you're wasting your time and you can move on, <laughs> right? So anyway, I want to make that very, very clear about where, where are these private lenders? Now, I hope you all can take notes really, really fast because I'm going to give you a long list right now. In fact, Crystal or Ashley or somebody, in fact, Ashley, let me just call on you to do it because I think Crystal is monitoring questions over there. Ashley, so if you would type in the chat, here are the reasons why Jay loves private money and why you are going to love private money as well if you haven't gotten any yet, right? So here we go in no particular order. Number one, no credit check. No credit check. Your credit score has got nothing to do with how much private money you can get. It's because these private lenders that I teach you how to find and locate, they, they could care less about your credit. Because private money is a collateral loan, right? Number two, number two reason I love private money. No income verification. No income verification. Well, by the way, Crystal, I didn't see Scott Patton at the beginning of the meeting. Did Scott show up? Is Scott here? I didn't see him. I haven't seen him. I'll quick look through just to make sure, but I hadn't seen him at the outset either. Okay, very good. So number two, no income verification. Never have I had a private lender ask me to verify my income, right? Now, a hard money, a hard money lender is going to pull your credit for sure. Number three, I think I saw in the chat somebody asked questions earlier about points. Number three, no points ever. You have never paid an origination fee or a point, and you all know what that is. If it's two points, that means that's 2% of the amount you're borrowing you got to bring to the closing table. That's how the hard money lenders and traditional lenders make their money. So no points. We never pay points. Number four, no appraisals. No appraisals. Hello. Good night. No appraisals. I've never had a private lender ask me to see an appraisal. Now, I might get an appraisal before buying it if it's like a really, really expensive property. But I always have a CMA, Comparable Market Analysis, done by my realtor. So no appraisals. You, you are not limited to what you can borrow based on what an appraisal says, right? Number five, this is my favorite reason. Number five is my favorite reason for using private money. That is, I always receive multiple checks on every private money deal that I do. Listen. I never take any money to the closing table, right? I always get a check because I borrow more than I need to purchase. Now, that's only going to work when you are buying properties at a discount and typically when there's going to be some type of rehab involved. I get a check when I buy. I mean, the check stub, my real estate attorney's check stub, I love it. It says excess cash to close. And let me tell you, I love me some excess cash, right? So I get a check when I buy. And then when I go to sell, if, I, if I'm selling it on rent to own, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, I can get a large non-refundable lease option deposit, the legal terms and option fee. And then I'm going to get another check when I sell it, which is the difference between when I sell it for and what I still owe my private lender, right? So multiple checks. I mean, you stop and think about it. You buy a property. You use private money the way we do it. You get a big check. 
You come home with a check. And now let's say you're private lender. Let's say you structure the deals to where there's no monthly payments until you cash out. You think that'll help your cash flow. But listen to this. Let's say your private lender needs the monthly cash flow. Whose money are you using to make those initial payments? Their money. Hello? Right? If I'm paying more than I need, and if they need monthly payments, I'm using theirs. Now, that property, you got to get that property cash flowing or rehabbed if you're going to cash out or whatever. But if they need monthly payments, I'm using their money initially. Number six, I said it earlier, you make the rules. You set the interest rate. Right? You set the length of the note. Right? Number seven, here's a big one why I love private money. There is no limit to the number of private lenders you can have. No limit. Now, if you're syndicating, there's a limit, but we're not syndicating in this world. Okay? So there's no limit to the number of private lenders you can have. Number eight, there's no limit. The amount of private money you can have at your disposal and borrow. When I was borrowing money from the banks, there was a limit to my line of credit. There is no limit in this world, right? Number nine, you can borrow across state lines. I mean, I think got private lenders in 10 different states. You're not limited to your local area, right? So therefore, that's going to help you get a lot of private money. Number 10, not limited. You're not limited to borrowing from accredited investors. Do private money the way I do it and my Platinums and Masterminds and Crystal and Chappie. Do the way we do it. And you, know, you can borrow from anybody. They do not have to be accredited investors. Number 11. You can close deals so much faster. Close deals so much faster. You know, when I was borrowing money from the banks, I'm surprised anything ever closed. I mean, I have a private lender that's got their account over at Quest, you know, using their retirement funds, then I get my deals funded in three days, three business days. I make my offers to where I'll close any deal all cash in seven days. Right. Therefore, you're going to get more offers accepted. You're going to get more offers accepted because you can close so much quicker. All right. The next reason I'm able to do an unlimited number of deals with multiple private lenders. So I'm not limited to the number of deals that I can have going on. Number 13, here's a big one no personal guarantees. All my lands, no personal guarantees. I've never had a private lender ask me to sign a personal guarantee. But I guarantee you, when you buy from an institution or hard money lender or bank or mortgage company, you're going to be signing a personal guarantee. Number four, I already sort of mentioned it. You can structure with no monthly payments. Fourteen, you can structure with no monthly payments. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.